The scripture I was given, and I want to thank OJ and Angelisha for putting together the program. The scripture I was given, and the title I was given was Acts 2.22, and the title is accredited by miracles, wonders, and signs. Have you ever um, gone to an unaccredited doctor? Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, luckily, no. <laughs> you ever gone to a doctor who lost his accreditation? Uh, <laughs> uh, you need brain surgery, on, right? Uh, you're just, just going to work on the brain. And you find the cheapest guy out there. Oh, no. Hylia. That's right. you got to go to Hylia. <laughs> yeah. Then you take a le left turn and you go to Pembroke Pines. There it is. Whoa. And then you go to Opelaka. Well, yeah, there it is. <laughs> want to offend anybody else, but um, <laughs> would you have brain surgery from no. a guy that's unaccredited? No. No, 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 no. That was my word. Yeah. And yet, no so often as leaders, we kind of walk in going, I can just do what I'm supposed to do, and you have no accreditation. Mm. Come on, bro. Mm. What I want to do tonight is put some thoughts out there from this scripture, some things that I think I, I tried to learn over the years. What does it mean to be accredited? So we're going to look at Jesus himself. Great, bro. And he is accredited. It is proven. It is factual. He fulfilled all the scriptures. Wow. And he did the things necessary so that you and I can go, I totally trust you. Absolutely. Come on, Here's bro. the problem. Even though Jesus is accredited, quite often we go, are you sure? <laughs> Maybe I'll just try it my way. You're unaccredited. Yeah. Amen. Why would we do this? Yeah. Yep. I, I appreciate Will's direction on the Bible talk. Just do it like they did in the first century. That's great. You do that, you're going to have a cranking Bible talk. Amen. But it's yeah. less about doing and is more about being. Yeah. So I want to talk tonight about being accredited by miracles, Wonder, bro. wonders, and signs. Oh, oh, bro. We're with you. Do your people trust you? Mm -hmm. How about this? Do your people want to trust you? But you're still uncredited, and they're like, I want to trust Christ. <laughs> I am. Come on, bro. I want to. Mm. How about this? Can your people trust you? Great, mm. great question, bro. Can they trust you? See, tonight, I'm not just talking to all the brothers in the church. I'm talking to the Bible Talk leaders. Yeah. yeah. Those of you who have stepped up to lead or you have an aspiration or inspiration to lead a Bible Talk, and a Bible talk should always be accredited in the sense that it has a mission to grow into two Bible talks. Amen. Right. To four, to eight. That's just what we do. Yeah. We mm. grow. Disciples grow and they produce more disciples. disciples. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you saw a baby that was one year old yeah. and you came back a year later and the baby was the same size, you'd be like, I am very concerned. Yeah. That baby is unaccredited. Yep. Mm. It's not growing. Something's wrong. On, so the same way, if the love isn't growing, if the numbers aren't growing, yeah. if the maturity isn't growing, it's an unaccredited Bible talk yeah. leader that's in charge. Mm. So we want to go after understanding some things here tonight. So Acts 2, verse 22, the Bible says, men of Israel. How about this? Men of Miami. Well, yes. Men of the Metro Miami Church. Amen. Listen to this. So you don't have an option. Well, okay. You know, when Peter preached this, he wasn't like, gosh, I was really hoping. No, he says, listen to this. One of the things I just want to help you understand is if you're a wimpy man, oh people are going to have a hard time following you. True. Yeah. When Peter preaches, he says, listen to this. And he's talking to more than 3,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. Only 3,000 were baptized. We get caught up on how many there's 3,000. Yeah. Only 3,000 were baptized. Only 3,000 responded. But Peter stood up and he said, listen to this. Listen to what I'm going to say tonight. You put your confidence in what we're about to talk about, and you will change and be a different person. Amen. Why? Because Jesus was accredited. Amen. He says, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by himself. No. Mm. Credited because he was so good looking. No. Matter of fact, the Old Testament says he was kind of ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like I'm going to get something. Well, oh, that's good. Good. Nobody has to agree, but I <laughs> <laughs> He was accredited by God Amen. to you. How? Mm -hmm. By miracles, wonders, and signs. Amen. How do we know Jesus is who he says he was? Mm -hmm. 
because he was accredited by the miracles, wonders, and signs that God did in him. Why did he do those things? To convince you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To prove to you that he is accredited. If Jesus is some mamby pamby guy that showed up in another scholar, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's millions of scholars. Yeah, sure. And the lives are train wrecked. Yeah, yeah. But this guy was accredited by miracles, wonders, and signs. Look what he says. Which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. He's speaking to people that don't even yet have faith in Jesus. Wow. And he says, you guys know this. Mm-hmm. Jesus was accredited, and you know it. Yep. He died, and he rose from the dead. And the miracles he did before and after are undeniable. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The guy was accredited. Yep. Yeah. You can have brain surgery with Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's accredited. Yep. You need heart surgery with Jesus. You're going to go to a heart surgeon that's like, eh, you know, I don't know, I'm still in school. I'm like in the third grade. No, you're going to go to the guy that's accredited. Jesus was accredited by miracles, wonders, and signs. Miracles, the word in the Greek is dunamis or dynamis, where we get our word dynamite. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A miracle. I thought miracle. Well, dunamis, the word, means power. Well, I thought it was miracle. Yes, Jesus was accredited to you by miracles. Or we could replace it with another word. Jesus was accredited to you by power. How are you accredited? By the power that people see in your life. Or you're unaccredited by the lack thereof. If there's not power in your life, people go, you know, I want to follow you. Mm -hmm. I want to imitate you. Mm -hmm. I want to take your input. But I see your life is powerless. Yeah. Yeah. It, if that's true about you, I want to challenge you tonight that you don't believe who Jesus was. Ooh. Come on, Matt. Jesus was a man accredited as you yourselves know. So, bro. You know yeah. it. So when you start down, I don't know if I can lead a Bible class. I don't know. I don't know if I can bring someone to church. Yeah. Come you, on, bro. You just, stop. Yep, Go nice. back to verse 22. As you yourselves know. Yeah. Is there anyone in, and we, we're disciples here, so you can't lie. Yeah. Come on, bro. Amen. 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 Is there anyone in here tonight that goes, I, I don't know if Jesus is really who he says he is? Oh, wow. Come yeah. on, bro. Talk about so it. then why do we allow ourselves to be unaccredited and powerless? Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's, everyone's watching you like, <sighs> and it's like, where's the power? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. I would argue that the problem is you don't believe or you forgot or something got in the way. Yes. So that you no longer believe that wow. Jesus was accredited. As you yourselves know. What is Peter making the case for? You must have faith so that you can be accredited as well. Yeah. Mm. Jesus is trying to help, uh, Peter's trying to help us understand. Dunamis. Dynamis. The ability to perform based on God's power. Mm. We need these miracles, this power from God, to grow in our sanctification. What is sanctification? It's being set apart from the world as God's people who overcome, as God's people who change, as God's people who grow, when for most, it seems impossible. Disciples become accredited when you prove to the world and the demonic forces of evil that you believe in Jesus. And so then you begin to change. You begin to grow in areas you didn't think were possible. People around are like, what the heck is going on with you? And I'm not talking to just the baby disciples. I'm talking to all the disciples here tonight. Absolutely. If you stop changing or you believe your GPS, the GPS says you've arrived. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. No, you haven't. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 45 years. You have not arrived. Yeah, bro, yeah. Your GPS is lying to you. You made it to a destination, but your person is not yet what it needs to be. So no, you haven't arrived. So what does that mean? All of us need the dunamis, the power, the yeah, miracles yeah, of God, yeah, so that we can be accredited. People need to see the church filled with people who actually biblically love one another. Yeah. You know, when people see that, they're blown away. Yeah. They're like, what the, what the, what? Yeah, yeah. A black guy and a white guy? What oh, the what? A Haitian <laughs> and a Latino? Yeah. 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 They don't just like each other. They're best friends. Come on. They're unified. Love it. They preach the word together. Okay, let's get a little bit deeper. Yes. In the the church, we have multiple Latinos from different 
colombiano well. dominicano venezolano well. okay. cubano well. yeah. I, 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 do you know I lived in South America for three years yeah. do you know that Latin Americans absolutely 100% hate each other yeah. in the world yeah. just hate each other World Cup Argentina won. Were the Cubans happy? No. <laughs> were the Chileans happy? Yeah. What are you going? No, they were infuriated. Mm. Wow, man. There is a hatred that you think there's racism in America. You have no idea. <laughs> Move around the country, uh, the world a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. But in our church, we have Latinos that have Latin or Spanish-speaking Bible talks that absolutely love one another. Amen. Amen. That right. accredits right. us from the world. Yes. It shows people the power of God. Yes. So God gives these miracles so that he can make us into the people we need to be so that we can be sanctified yeah. and go to heaven. Amen. You must have power in your life. Yeah. You must have miracles. Secondly, he says he needs to be accredited by, he was accredited by miracles and then wonders. Wonders, the Greek word is teras, which means a wonder, a marvel, a miraculous event from heaven. Why? It's given to elicit a reaction from the onlookers. Wow. Mm. So this is also a miracle. Wow. But this miracle has a specific purpose to elicit a reaction from you. Yep. So the people mm. watch you, oh. Mm. <laughs> so you see Jesus perform miracles and the apostles perform miracles. It was done on purpose. It was a wonder, terrace, in order to get a reaction from you to stop and think. Mm. It's an extraordinary event with supernatural effects left on all witnessing it. It's a miracle. Amen. Thirdly, signs. Greek word is semion. A sign, which is typically miraculous. It is also given to confirm, corroborate, authenticate, Authenticate and emphasize the end purpose, which is to exalt God, not man. Yes. Wow. wow. We'll get into that oh. in a minute. Ooh, okay. okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's God exalting himself through a sign. The other word for Simeon is miracle. Because God is showing that mere man cannot replicate this sign. Mm, yes. It comes from God. Wow, that's good. So if we were to change this verse into what we just discovered, it would say that Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited to God by God to you by miracles, miracles, and miracles. Nice. Because wow. <laughs> each word has as its root miracle. Miracles, miracles, miracles. That's how Jesus is accredited. Wow. That's so then you go, we're disciples of Jesus, so what should happen in our life? Miracle, miracle, miracle. Miracle, yeah. miracle. Wow. Yeah. Miracles, wonders, and signs. Wow. Different purposes for each. Now, I don't want to get too much into the Holy Spirit studies tonight. That's for another time, okay? Amen. We're going to do the uh, first principles by region this Love year. It. Oh, bro. You do need to understand this. We're not talking about supernatural miracles that you can heal someone and things like that. Yeah. Those things pass with the uh, yeah. death of the, the last apostles. That's right. But I'm talking about miraculous things that happen in your life that people go, that wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was God. Amen. 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 And people go, how, how, what? You ever been in a Bible study with someone and you and something comes to you that's like crazy? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And you go, hey, here's what I think. And they go, oh, and they start crying. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. What, what did I do? Yeah, man. Okay, let me just help you out real quick. That, was that wasn't you. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you are smart. You guys are brilliant. You guys are amazing. But you in and of yourself do not have the wisdom to get yeah, into a person's right, heart deep, bro. but them the way the Spirit does. So the Lord will use you, give you wisdom and insight to do a miraculous thing. Yeah, yeah. He will. Yeah. Have you ever had that time where you're like, man, I just don't feel like loving anybody? Yeah. 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 Selfish, good for nothing. And you, and you get very into yourself. And then you stop and go, God, I'm sorry. I really want to say, like, oh my gosh, Paul, I love you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. great, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> That's God changing your heart. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness is now in you. God's working a miracle in you on, so man, that man. you can show the glory of God on, that man. is not in any of yourself. Is. Come on, bro. is it really you? Oh, he's so loving. Nah, bro. He was just born that way. No, no, no. There's so much wisdom. Come on, bro. Amen. 
So obvious and powerful was the, was the life and impact of Jesus that it was undeniable. Yeah. And you should remember that. Yeah. For this year, I want you to remember this scripture. Yeah. He was accredited through miracles, wonders, and signs, as you yourselves know. Yeah. You know it. So when you start doubting, you stop and go, wait, no, I know this. Yeah. I know it's true. Yeah. Every cell in your body might be telling you, no, 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 no. Just put it to death. Yeah. yeah. Stab that sucker in the face. Well, cut off its head and then stab it down the throat. Oh my right. God! Bro. Come on, man. That's right. You don't want to play with your sin, like oh, just playing with my nah, bro. playing with my faithlessness. No, you you stab it in the face. You cut off its head, then you stab it down the throat until that's gone. You go back. Wait, wait. I know this is true. Yeah. Just understand. Yeah. Come that's on, bro. the radicalness that you need to have in order to be accredited. You know, the same reckless power that's at work in Jesus is in a work in you in Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go, brother. This is awesome. What's up, Matt? Verse 18, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. How much power? Incomparably great. Who's it for? Us, us who, who believe. believe. Wow. Come on, bro. Then he goes on. He goes, let me, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me take it a little further. Go for it. That power, that dunamis, that miracle, is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. So the same power that rose Jesus, the same miracle that rose Jesus, yeah. is at work in Isaac Gonzalez. Yeah, come on. OJ in Duke. Come on. Yeah. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Even Enrico. Well, wow. Even. Now it's in there. It's in there somewhere. Even. Come on, Rico. So here's my question, men of God. What is it? Why do you settle for a powerless life? Come on, bro. Because wow. you're doubting. It's true. You're doubting what God has called you to be. That's true. What he's called you to become. That's true. He's called you to be men that are accredited by God because you're so powerful. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is given to you. Yeah, come on, bro. And this power is for the glory of God and for his church. Amen. Look at verse 22. And God placed all things under his feet. Who's Jesus' feet? Mm. And appointed him to be head over everything. Why? For the church. Amen. So he did not give you this power for you. Mm. See, we're so insecure. Yeah. We've had Satan steal our identity. Identity theft started the day you were born. Come on, bro. Wow. Didn't happen last week when your credit card got stolen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Satan's been going after your identity since the day you were born. God made you to be a man yeah. that has the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, but we settle for less mm -hmm. because we have a different life and a different wow. doctrine on, than the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. This is why that, you know, have you ever had those moments where you feel it? You feel weak? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. feel yeah. things? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and you can physically feel it. Yeah. 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 You ever had that it's in your head? You have all these thoughts like, I don't know, should I really be a Come Christian? On, you know, yeah. I don't know. I can, I can lead anything. And like a couple days ago, you're like Come knocking on. down doors. Yeah. You're saving people. Yeah. Yeah. A couple days later, you're like, yeah. Yeah. that's Satan trying that's to rip true. your head off yeah. and stab you down the throat. Wow. That's true. Wow. You got to remember who you are. Amen. Yep, my bro. A disciple without power Ooh. is like calling a bike a car. Oh, no. Wow. wow. A bike is powered by what? You. A car is powered by what? An engine. If you're a disciple without power, you're calling yourself a car, but you're really a bike. Wow. Wow. I want you to redefine it tonight. Yep. Redefine it. What's it, bro? You're on a bike. Yeah. You're yeah. a car, yeah. which can go faster, go longer, yeah. do more, yeah. take care of bunches of people at the same time. Talk wow. about it. Talk about it. But it's not powered by you. Mm. See, this is where we get messed up. We want it to be. Oh, get down. Oh, sit down and shut up. <laughs> no, it's powered by God. That's what a disciple is like. Mm. It's not your power. This yeah. is where we mess up. We yeah. want to be the powerful ones. Yeah. 
Yes, you are, but because God makes you into a disciple, and he uses his Holy Spirit within you. We've been given several things. 2 Timothy 1.7 says we've been given power, love, and self-discipline. Dunamis, agape, and self-discipline. You've been given that. The question is, do you practice it? I went through last year, and there are many times where I go, I feel powerless. Yeah. I don't want to love anybody. <laughs> love myself. Yeah. Self-discipline, out the window. Yeah. And I forgot who I was. Mm. I forgot who God was calling me to be. Yeah. He was calling me to be a man filled with his spirit. When that is true and you believe it, radical, miraculous changes are possible, and you can live the life that God has called you to. Yeah. yeah. Come on, bro. If you forget. Being a Christian is super hard. Yeah. Yep. Being a leader, almost impossible. Yep. Yeah. Leading other people, guys, it will absolutely wear yep. you yep. out yep. if you're not truly <coughs> been on the power yep. and miracles of God. Yeah. What I love is that this same word dunamis is discovered in Romans chapter 1. Let's go. Come on, bro. Stop, bro. Power or miracles, Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Come on, bro. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the dunamis of God. It is the miracle of God. It is the power of God. It's the same word. For what? For the salvation of everyone who believes. So when your belief is faltering, you cannot have the power of God in your life. So you can go after it and attack it. For in the gospel, verse 17, a righteousness from God is revealed. The righteousness that is by faith. Faith from first to last. Just as it's written, the righteous will live by faith. And then just write down 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 21. Mm. At the end of that passage, it says that Jesus died on the cross in your place so that you could become the righteousness of God. Yep. Every time I read that scripture, I go, what? Yeah, that's powerful. What kind of power would it take on, to make bro. Matt Sullivan <laughs> the righteousness of God? Where God goes, there's my righteousness. And there's my righteousness. And there's my righteousness. Not because of what you did, but because of what I did for you. Yes. And because now you are my righteousness, I make you powerful. Yes. And miracles, wonders, and signs, or miracles, 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 can begin happening wow, in, man. in your life. It's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. Come on, Matt. I have three points tonight. We're here tonight. Come on, bro. The cost of miracles. The power of miracles. And the need for miracles. Point number one, the cost of miracles. What stops a miraculous life? Sin and inherent sin. Mm-hmm. Mark chapter 6. Come on, bro. Go, brother. Come on. What stops a miraculous life? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And I'm going to roll really fast through some scriptures here. Go, go, go bro. bro. Okay. Excellent. We need this. Mark 6, verse 4. Jesus and uh, said to them, Only in his hometown among his relatives, in his own house, is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. What's the first thing that stops you? The lack of faith. See, point number one is there's a cost. What's the cost? You must find your faith. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, I just want to wrestle with some of the guys who have been around for a few years. Is it easy to continually find your faith? No. Mm-hmm. Is it just like, ah, oh, it's like, oh, I just get up in the morning, I'm super faithful. No. Or does it actually take some blood, sweat, and tears yeah, to figure yeah. that out? And then in very difficult situations, it's presented to you, and then yeah. 12 more come right after you, like, <laughs> like being beat down by life, yeah. and you need to find your faith. That's right. And then you need to find it again. And then God will go, I'm going to take my hand back. Let me do 12 more things. You're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And God goes, you got this. Yeah. You got it. Come on, come on, bro. Come on, man. Jesus cannot do miracles when you lack faith. Wow. Now, here's the thing. I used to read this and go, that's unbiblical. <laughs> this Bible verse is unbiblical. Right. <laughs> How in the world could Jesus not do miracles because of your lack of faith? Because that's what he chooses to do. Yeah. <laughs> he chooses to limit himself 
by your faith. <gasps> so hang on a second. What does that mean for 2022? <laughs> what does that mean for the first week of 2023? Forget all that. What's it going to mean for the rest of 2023? Stop doubting and believe. Stop it. Put it to death. I want you to remember this vividly. Isaac remembers this. We have several of you times about it. If you take out the sword, when you start doubting, mm-hmm. you take out the oh, sword, yeah, man. and you stab the sin of faithlessness in the face, <laughs> right in the face. There it is. Yep. And you pull it out, and then you cut off its head. Yep. Mm. And then you're not done. You stab it right down the throat. Because if you don't, mm. Satan will do that to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to be a shell of a man. Yeah. Trying to figure out how do I, should I even go to church today? I don't know, I don't know if I can go to church. I mean, I have kids now. It's so hard. I did a Bible talk with four people in it. It's just overwhelming me. Oh. That life will wipe you out. My boss on, yelled bro. at me, so I have to work Sundays now. Garbage. Yeah, bro. No, you don't. Come on, bro. Yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. My on, mommy, bro. she's mad at me. <laughs> so I better do what mommy says. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're a man of God. Is, Don't bro. cut off your mom's head, amen? No, no, no. You cut off the doubts. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a side note in case you do. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, what's the cost? Impure motives. Come on, bro. Yes. Talk about that. It's a heavy cost. Yes. What? Yes. Here's what I mean. It is so easy to have impure motives. Oh, yes. Yes. Here's what I found over the years, and Come many on. of the guys have been around for a while can attest to this. Come on. God will begin working in the life of a brother. Yeah. God will do incredible things. Oh. And that brother in the beginning will glorify God. Yeah. He's off on his knees. God, be- and a couple months later, he's like, <coughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, no. God. Oh, I did. Oh, you this? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And you start looking down and somehow you did it oh. guys it's happened from Genesis to Revelation and it's happened in your life and my life yeah, bro. Come on, bro. Talk about my it. motives become yeah. I want to be recognized yeah bro yeah. I want someone to notice Come on, my ego is fragile and broken I had a tough <laughs> childhood and this happened and that happened so I want to I want to prove something to everybody yeah, I'm gonna crank this Bible talk yeah. You put up numbers? Oh, I'll put up numbers. There it is, bro. What is wrong with you? (laughs) You have fallen away. And here's the thing. God will smote the ever-living beast. Talk about it, man. And you're going to come back going, what just just happened to you? Because your motives are so impure. God just, I'm just going to lop off your head. That's right. And you'll find yourself in a pile on the floor going, what what just happened to me? And God's like, don't ever do that again. How do I know? I've done it. Yeah. And I discipled about 50 guys yeah. that have done it as well. Yeah. 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 You know, the so saddest true. thing is watch so church true. leader do it. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get all bowed up. Oh. <laughs> bro, I think this and I think that. Hey, man, bro. <laughs> I think he should do that. Well, I think this and I think that. Hey, man, bro, I did. hey, listen, I want you to do great for God. Come on, man. A week later, hey, bro, I really yeah, There it is, right there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your motive? Yeah, bro. Had six <laughs> baptisms. Yeah. In the dirt, masturbating. Yeah. 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 What happened to Talk you? about it, bro. Come on, man. Because it was for you. That's it, yes. brother. Bro. Talk about That's truth. good. That's good. Here's the cost on, of miracles. Bro. You have better be humble. Yeah. 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 Mm. God will put miracle after miracle. And guys, look at the life of David. So yeah. many miracles in his life, and he got prideful. Yep. Yeah. Committed adultery and murdered someone. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. That guy would never do that. Stop yeah. talking. Yeah. Yes, you would. Yeah. 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 That's a good point right there. Yes, you would. Yep. Yeah. You and I would do the same thing. That's why it's in there, to show you don't do this. So how are your motives tonight? Do you have goals and dreams for your ego or to save others and glorify God? I want to challenge you to get your armor on and fight that filth because it will destroy your life. It will destroy the church. God's honor is more important than the number of people in this church. And we've got to keep that clear in our minds. It's filth. Study out number 16 about Korah. He wanted a little credit for himself. Study out Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. See what happened to them when they wanted credit for something. What did theirs get credit for? They should 
son of Saddam. Mm -hmm. Number three, what's the cost? Sin. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just mentioned sin. Yeah, I'm going to go further. Sin. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. There's a cost. What, 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 bro, that's not a cost. Yes, it's a cost because you need to repent. Yeah. If there's sin in your life tonight that you have not dealt with, I'm challenging you before the Lord, not just because I'm your brother, not because I'm your evangelist, yeah. Yeah. but because the Lord will show you yeah. if you don't get broken and repent. Yeah. Yeah. He will take every bit of power away from you because yeah. he's not going to have his name disgraced. Yeah. Or I've seen this. God will use you for a while yeah. if you don't want to be humble. Yeah. And like, okay, fine. And one, right just right look up Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Yeah. Eight graphs for seven years. Jesus. Okay. I never ate graphs for seven years, but I remember about six months. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> out of my mind. Like, what in the world? Seriously. You're not above it. I'm not above it. I could go back to eating grass tomorrow if I get all prideful and allow sin just to take over my life. Have you lost in your lost your way over the holidays? I know a lot of brothers go home over the holidays, see an old girl, start looking up stuff on the phone, start doing things you used to do, seeing people you used to see. Next thing you know, you're masturbating or yep. hanging out with some girl yep. or doing stuff that you said, I promise I will never. That's right. You find yourself doing it again. Come on, bro. Here's the thing. Guys, I'm not yeah. talking down to you. Please hear me. I've no, done those right things over the holidays. Right. Not this right. time. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> I had a very successful, awesome spiritual holiday. Yeah. 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 So there were times I'd come back and I'm just like, mm, yeah. I'm a failure. I'm an idiot. Here's the cost of the miracles. If you want to have miracles, miracles, miracles. Repent. Yeah. Here's the funny thing. That cost, it's costly because it takes a lot of heart. Yeah. But the results are unbelievable. Yeah. How do you feel after you really repent? Oh, yeah. awesome. so it's like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've got my sanity back. Yeah, I can think straight. I actually love people again. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's refreshing. Love it, bro. So what's then is the cost of miracles? Men of God must become three things. Number one, tenacious fighters. You've got to be tenacious. I'm just going to read these things. We've got to fight to have faith. That's a cost. It doesn't just happen. You get up in the morning, I'm faithful. No, you've got to fight to have it. So you've got to be a tenacious fighter. A life-changing faith. A faith in him, not yourself. Where you lay down your life in the middle of persecution, suffering, a thorn in the flesh. And when mankind wants you to do it again, what am I talking about? Bible talk leaders, once you're successful once, everybody you're reading goes, do it again. And then you do it again, they go, do it again. Because they want to follow you. Everyone wants to get on the wave, like, I want to be a part of this. So there's this fear of failure. No, fear of success. Yeah. You did it once. Now you got to do it again. Yeah. And again. And again. And then next year. And then 10 years from now. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. That's painful. Yeah. You've got to be a tenacious fighter. Yeah. This pain forces you to walk with God and depend on him so that you can radically change. And he'll continuously give you insight, power, and strength. Mm. And love at levels not possible for a human being. Mm. Only if you're a tenacious fighter. Mm. Yep. We gotta develop this tenacious fighting spirit to live in the power of God. Amen. A lazy man waiting for miracles will never see them. Ooh. Remember the invalid, invalid by the lake after 38 years? What did yep. you say? Get up! Get up. What are you doing here? Get up! They're like, oh, I'm waiting. Stop! It's an old song, but people get mad when I say this old song. I say it because I'm waiting on the world to change. Mm -hmm. Waiting on the world. Stop! Yeah. The world ain't going to change. The world's going to keep getting worse and worse, and you better figure out how to change. Yeah. Stop waiting. You be a tenacious fighter. Secondly, you need to be a purely motivated warrior. Amen. You want miracles without the maker? Mm. Come on, bro. Wow. So often, brothers I've discipled, they want the miracles, but they don't want the maker. Mm -hmm. This speaks to your motive. Yeah. Yeah. Speaks, why did you become a disciple in the first Come place? On. Yeah. To walk with God. The other day I was remembering, I was sitting in my house, I was having a quiet time, and I was thinking about all the stuff we have to do this year. We finished our whole calendar, and I was looking at it going, <laughs> so I was just like, I was just overwhelmed. Yeah. And I went outside and I prayed and I was thinking, what was it like when I first became a Christian? Mm. Mm. 
I had no role. I had no title. I had just become a disciple. I was the most pathetic, characterless human being you've ever met in your life. And just to make it through a day, I had to like beg God, help me not to lust or to lie. I was a delight to lie, to manipulate people. I was a manipulator. Come on, bro. I was a liar. I was pathetic. At the end of the day, I go, I need help. I need help. I need help. Mm-hmm. I need your help. Yeah. And I remember just praying to God and feeling like I could connect with him anytime. Come on, man. Anywhere. My friends could fall away, and I've got God. Uh-huh. Come on, man. That's what I want more than anything. Mm-hmm. Purely motivated works. Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. With you, bro. I want to be close to God. Do you want written on your tombstone? He planted 20 churches. <laughs> baptized a thousand people. Mm. Was a stud for Jesus. Mm. Come on. Or he's been faithful. Come on. Mm. Come on, to bro. the end. That's wow. good. Yeah. For God's glory. You've got to be a purely motivated warrior. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on, bro. Number three, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Yes, bro. sir. Excellent, bro. Close What's out up, here just bro? a second. What is the cost? In verse 7, Paul writes, To keep me from becoming conceited, because of these surpassingly great revelations, and you guys will have great revelations, you'll have great victories, and to keep you from com- becoming conceited, something's going to happen to you. <coughs> There was given me a thorn in my flesh. Oh, What's the cost of miracles? You will have a thorn in your flesh. Mm. See, this isn't written just for Paul or for Paul. I don't care. No, this is written for you and me. Yeah. Because Paul had miraculous things happen in his life, miracle after miracle after miracle, and he got a little bit prideful. Yeah. And guy goes, let me help you out. Mm. Here's a thorn in your flesh. Sure. Mm. Not just anything. A messenger of Satan. What? God gave him the storm to save him. To save him. To force him to stop and think, am I doing this for God or just for me? Is this my power? Is this my wisdom? Three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm-hmm. Whatever weakness you have in your life and you just can't seem to get rid of, God gave it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Wow. To make you humble. Mm-hmm. To force you to deal with your humanity wow. and depend on Him. Therefore, I boast all the more glad about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why Christ's power or Christ's miracles, dunamis, may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Amen. See, we can have that memorized, but if you don't live it, mm-hmm. you'll miss the point. There you go, bro. Yeah. There's a thorn, maybe two, that God gave you. You need to identify it. You need to understand it. You need to wrestle with it. And then you depend on God yeah. when he takes you out. Everyone, I believe, is going to have some kind of a thorn or multiple thorns in their yeah. life. It's to save you. Yeah. And it's to bring glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So men, number three, what's the cost? You need to be a joyful thorn bearer. Ooh. Come on, bro. That's it right there, bro. That's all. I, I do a, so appreciate Chris. He carries a physical, several physical thorns happy, joyful servant. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, because he would too, most of the time. Yeah, come on, bro. There are times when it gets to him. Yep. Yep. And the thorn just humbles him so much he just doesn't know what to do. Come on, bro. Yeah. And he snaps back, and he goes after it again. Amen. That's what you can do. Wow. I have two more points. We don't have time to deal with them, so I'm just going to share. The power of miracles is basically to get you focused on God rather than your limitations power of miracles is to get you to focus on God. 
when God is enough, when you believe that God can do anything, that's what it says. Yep. Yeah. Put your faith back in the Lord. And last point is the need for miracles. In John 4, 48, Jesus says, unless you people see miracles, you will not believe. Mm -hmm. There need to be miracles in your life. Mm -hmm. As a leader, I, I, I'm here to tell you that people need to see miracles in your life. Mm -hmm. They look at you and go, oh my gosh, again? Oh my gosh, again? Oh my gosh, again? Oh, you did it again? How do you, how do you keep doing that? Now you know how to do it. It's kind of like Will shared. He, he learned how to do it, and he goes, oh, I, I know how to do it. And then you do it again, and do it again. Yeah. People need to see miracles. If you want to be accredited as a leader, people need to see miracles in your life. Right. Right. I don't think you're going to raise anybody from the dead, guys. You know? <laughs> but you will raise them from the dead spiritually Amen. by studying with them and baptizing them. Amen. By helping him get restored, or by helping a brother get strong when he thought he would never make it. Amen. I look back over the years, there's several of you sitting here that I go, oh, I don't think you're going to make it. Amen. But you're still here because someone got in your life, poured their life into you, gave scriptures to you, helped you, you stayed faithful, and now you go, man, I'm still here. People need to see miracles in your life that help to credit you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some practicals to close out. All right. For 2023, number one, there, there are four of them, five of them. 2023, I'm calling every man in this room to pray, pray for at least two hours a day. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Now listen, Come some on, of you bro. working full-time jobs, you're like, bro, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yep. Yep. You can do it. It is hard. I'm asking you to sacrifice. What's the cost of miracles? Come on, bro. Walk with God. Yep. Find a way. Maybe you get an hour and 20 minutes. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Okay? But two hours, it will make you a different person. Yeah. Your ministry will begin to see who you are. Yeah. Number two, share your faith daily. Yeah, come, yeah. On. come on, bro. You know, I, I put a goal out to myself to share my faith with at least 100 people a month. Nice. That's, That's a little nice. over three a day. Just share your faith. Yeah. I'm fumbling a little bit so far, but I'm, I'm working yeah. on it. Okay? Yeah, bro. We'll get there. But 100, 100 a month. Maybe that's too high for you, but one a day. Share your faith every day. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're just stopping. Man, I'm going to share with this guy. Amen. You'll be blown away by, oh, my gosh, he's wide open. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Greatest thing ever, bro. How did I baptize someone this year? Oh, I just decided to share my faith every day. There you go. God do something great. Number three, consistently be in three to five studies a week. Yes. Just every week. Just I'm going to be on three studies this week. If you don't have one, go, hey, OJ. <laughs> hey, Isaac. Hey, Will, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in, I'm going to hold to this. I'm going to be in three to five studies every single week. Amen. Come on, bro. It will Come change on. you into a different person. Guys, every time I do a Bible study, my heart gets off the phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's on, like you're reminded of all the convictions you're supposed to have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to be a disciple. It just, it refreshes your heart, preaching yeah. the word. Come on, bro. Number four, get powerful times with the brothers every week and stay in contact. No, I, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not with a disciple. Now, yeah. cool thing is I live with one. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but also among the brothers, I'm with some brother or minimally on the phone every single day, multiple times a day. Come this on, is bro. one of the reasons I'm stronger than most people. Mm -hmm. I don't say that to boast. I have a weakness. I am weak. I need the brothers. Yeah. Yeah. So when I get more time with the brothers, I get stronger. Yeah. 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 And number five, I want to challenge you guys. Read your Bible through and be a student. Can I give you guys a challenge to read your Bible all the way through in a year? Ooh, yeah. But secondly, good, good challenge. to read an, a book every, a separate book every month. Nice. Come on, bro. Some of you can do more than that, but read a separate book. I, I just finished a book called Atomic Habits. Yeah. I started my wife's book. I've read through my wife's book, but I just started it. I'll finish that, and then I'm going to finish Joe, uh, um, uh, what's his name, uh, John Causey's new book. Ooh. I've got like six lined up already. I'm going to knock yeah, them out. Let's go, brother. And then I want to leave you guys with some miraculous things that I want to see us do this year. Okay. Yeah, come on, bro. Uh, we will have Zach and Christina Dryden appointed Advanced Women's Ministry at the SAMC. Woo! Let's go. That's some miracles happening already. The church in Baton Rouge is beginning to come along. Uh, they've been baptizing. It's, it's been a little slow, but they take care of all their own finances now. They're completely, completely self-supporting. And they've grown the church to a point where they're starting to see multiple studies constantly. Every week since the week the church started, they've had more than one-for-one -one visitors to church on Sunday. Wow. Come on. Every week. That's amazing. Man. Every week. And so we're going to be seeing Zach and Christina point at the SMC. Yeah. For locally here in Miami, I have six things that I want us to have. I'll put these out so you can see them. Uh, we may refine them a little bit, but I want us to have prayer goals for 2023. Number one, 
A hundred plus baptisms for the Lord. Yeah, oh, baby. Yeah, Number yeah. two, over twelve restorations. So last year we had six people restored. Let's double that and have at least twelve this year. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want us to have successful quarterly stewardship with our finances. What does that mean? Never having a problem with finances again, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. So every week, I want to put before the region leaders to have at least 95% of your people give contribution every week, no matter what. 95%. Why not 100? Because invariably, someone goes out of town and forgets. Mm -hmm. But if we can shoot for 95%, I think from time to time we'll hit 100. Amen. That's awesome. And our special contribution this year, I want us to give over 125%. Amen. Uh, I want us to blow through 250 disciples in the Metro Miami Church. Now, please hear me. Last year, we sent 38 people out for Metro Miami. This year, we baptized one. We've already sent out one. <laughs> <laughs> baptized and sent them out. This year, the goal is to stay around 8 to 10% of the people being yes. sent out. So we're going to have a lot oh, fewer people get up, go out, but we're still going to have people sent out. So probably about 10 to 20, 10 to 20 people will be yeah. sent out from Miami this year. Mm. Now, we do have some people moving in we'll send out. But bottom line is I want to see the church blow away 250 by December. Amen. Uh, over 250 Amen. disciples. I want us to be defined by our love for the Lord, yes. for one another, and the lost. Come on, bro. And finally, something new, I want us to have what I called two-by-two two fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. So if these two guys are in the same Bible talk, mm -hmm. I want them to work together this year to help one man become a disciple. Okay. Mm -hmm. These two guys in the Bible talk, I want them to work together until one man becomes a disciple. Come on. These two guys, <coughs> so two-by-two, two, every two men, Every two women, we're going to go after seeing one person baptized nice. or restored uh, this year. The church will grow significantly. Yep. Now, once OJ and, and Muhammad see one man baptized, they stop and retire, right? No. no. Oh my what? God. They do it again. So when they do it again, now they have a third guy. So what are they going to do? They go, hey, let's work together and get two guys. That's right. So I think you're going to see a beginning of exponential type growth yeah. start happening in the church. But I want us to start with this idea of two by two fruitfulness. So tonight, I want to challenge you to remember that Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by miracle, yeah. miracle, yeah. and miracle.